Welcome to you all to First United Church of Oak Park. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, a more light congregation of the Presbyterian Church USA, which means this. Whether you are gay or straight, whether you are trans or cisgender, wherever you fall on life's beautiful spectrum, on the beautiful spectrum of the body and of love, wherever you fall, you are blessed and beloved of God. However your family looks, however your body looks, however your family works, you are blessed just as you are. Your being with us in worship today has made this a more beautiful expression of the body of Christ. As a congregation, our ministries are carried on by the people of the church, by you, by the members of the church who take up leadership, who follow God's call upon your life for service to the church. So today, we are thrilled to be able to share with you the ordination and installation of elders and deacons for the coming year. Able people, people of faith who have decided to serve the church in this coming year. It is a blessing, their service. So I invite you to be in a posture and a time of prayer as we share this service of ordination and installation with you. There are a variety of gifts, but it is the same spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but the same spirit is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. Each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Recognizing the gifts that God has given each of us, we also call through the voice of this congregation, particular women and men, to service as elders and deacons. We confirm this call to ministry through ordination and installation this morning. The names I am about to read are of those elected by the congregation and called by God to serve as elders. Dave Hansen, John Lorraine, Susan Pearson, Matiki Reed, Lucas Colt Benute, and Sally Smiley. The names I am about to read are of those elected by the congregation and called by God to serve as deacons. Robert Ock, Carla Hader, and Ann Korber. Friends, having prayerfully considered the duties and responsibilities of your mission, are you prepared to serve with the help of God in Christ's name and for the glory of God? If so, please say, I am. I am. Do you promise to exercise your ministry diligently and faithfully, showing forth the love of Christ? If so, please say, I will. I, I, will. I will. Will you sincerely practice the Christian faith, attested to in the confessions of the United Church of Christ and the Presbyterian Church USA, as well as the whole company of saints? And will you strive to be faithful in your leadership of the people of God? If so, please say, I will. I will. I will. To the incoming elders, will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? If so, please say, I will. I will. I will. I will. To incoming deacons, Will you be a faithful deacon, watching over the people, nurturing a culture of care in our midst, and providing prayerful leadership among us? If so, please say, I will. I will. I will. To all of you, in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ in all that you do? If so, please say, I will. I will. I will. I will. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, 
intelligence, imagination, and love. If so, please say, I will. I will. I will. As the moderator of council and speaking on behalf of the congregation, hear now these words. We accept these elders and deacons as chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. We promise to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. At this time, the elders and deacons who are being ordained or installed, you are invited to hold your hands in a posture of blessing. Palms open and held upward, as if waiting for one who is unseen to take your hands and raise you up. Let us pray. May the Holy Spirit strengthen you for the ministry of elder or deacon in Christ's church and equip you with everything good to do God's will. May each of you feel the loving presence of God guiding you in all that you do, all that you say, as you serve this church. Amen. 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 Jonah turned and went the other way. 
he found a boat that was headed for Tarshish in Spain, as far from Nineveh as you could go. Suddenly, a storm came. The sailors were afraid. Each one prayed to his own God. They threw everything they were carrying overboard into the ocean to make the ship as light as they could. Now a prophet is someone who helps people know what to do. The sailors went to look for Jonah and do you know where he was? He was asleep in the bottom of the boat. The captain found him and commanded him to call on his God to save them. All Jonah did was climb up onto the deck of the boat. The storm got worse and the people were even more afraid. They decided to cast lots to see who they would throw overboard. Now a prophet is someone who speaks for the one true God, but Jonah still did not speak. The sailors asked him who he was. He told them that he worshiped God, the one who had made the sea and the dry land. Well, then the sailors were afraid. They knew that Jonah was trying to run away from God. The storm was getting worse. The sea was even more troubled. Finally, Jonah said, throw me in and the storm will stop. So they threw Jonah overboard. All was suddenly calm. The storm stopped. The sea was quiet. Now a prophet is someone who brings people close to God by what they say or what they do. But Jonah said nothing. Even though he said nothing, when the seas grew calm, the sailors all fell down and worshiped the true God. Now a prophet is someone who is close to God and a false prophet is someone who is very far from God. But when Jonah was thrown into the water, he was neither close to nor far from God. He was sinking. As he sank, a great fish came. And the fish swallowed Jonah up. Jonah was in the belly of the big fish for three days and for three nights. Jonah began to pray and the fish began to feel very strange. It grew sicker and sicker, and finally, it swam to the shore, and it had to vomit Jonah onto dry land. Now, 
Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and tell the people there that they are behaving badly and they need to change and become good. This time, Jonah went to Nineveh. Jonah cried to the people of Nineveh that they were behaving badly and that God commanded them to be good. God said they would be destroyed if they did not change. Now a prophet is someone who is overjoyed when people who are behaving badly become good. The people of Nineveh listened to God's call and they turned and became good. They went around wearing sackcloth and ashes to show how sorry they were for behaving badly. Even the king and queen were sorry. Even the creatures in the fields were sorry too. And they also became good. And that great city of Nineveh was not destroyed. But this made Jonah angry. He wanted the city to be destroyed. Those people were not even the people of God. He went outside the city and sat on a hill and sulked. Jonah wanted to get his way. God said, why are you angry, Jonah? God caused a plant to grow that would give Jonah shade from the hot sun. But then one night, God sent a worm to eat the plant and it withered away. When the sun rose the next day, there was a, an east wind that came and the sun was beating down on Jonah's head and he started to feel faint. He grew angry about the death of his plant. Why are you angry about the plant? God asked. Jonah said, I am angry, angry enough to die. He thought he still might get his way. God said, you pity the plant, but you did nothing for it. You did not cause it to grow. You did not care for it. Should I not pity Nineveh, that great city where there are more than 120,000 people and all their cattle? And that is how the story ends. Will you wonder with me about this story? I wonder which part of this story you liked best. I wonder which part of this story is the most important part. I wonder where you are in this story or which part of the story is about you? I wonder if there's any part of this story that we could leave out and still have all the story we need. Hmm. I wonder how you would finish this story. I wonder what you think Jonah did next, or what he might have said. I wonder what you think happens next. Our scripture reading for the day comes from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. Listen for a word from God. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, 
and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed God's mind about the calamity that would be brought upon them. And God did not do it. May God bless us with understanding. Will you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. One of the most enduring things about this pandemic is the way that it totally upends life and plans. To me, plans, they, they feel like a, like a pathway stretching out in front of me. I take one step and then another, and I, I feel like I'm making progress on my purpose in life, the purpose God has given me in my life. But these past months, I, I feel like my feet have been swept out from under me and I've been carried off to some unknown place with my feet set on some strange path, wondering what is my purpose right now? And time just keeps stretching out and out and out and out and out and out. Perhaps you know what I mean. Now, I don't have an answer for what we should do about all this. And I cannot tell you what God's purpose looks like for your life. But what I do have, I, I give you. And that is the story of Jonah. Now, the story of Jonah, it isn't long. You could read the whole thing in 15 minutes. The passage for today, it begins like this. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up! Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it... Wait, 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 hold on. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time? What was the first time? Well, that is the story. Jonah was in his hometown the first time God called him to be a prophet, telling him to go and prophesy to the people of Nineveh that they had to change their ways. Now, almost every time that a God calls a prophet, that prophet at first says, no, I can't be a vessel for your will, God. I'm not worthy. Isaiah, that poet among prophets, he says he is a man of unclean lips who is not pure enough to be God's messenger. Others said, I'm too young or I'm too old or I'm no public speaker. They try to say they're not worthy. But Jonah, Jonah is unique among the prophets. When God calls Jonah, he doesn't object. He doesn't make excuses. He doesn't say that he's not worthy. He doesn't say anything, in fact. Jonah just gets up, goes to the nearest port city, and skips town. He gets on a ship bound for Tarsus, which is about as far away from Nineveh as you could get. It's as if God had told Jonah, go prophesy to New York City. And so he hops in his car and starts driving to Seattle. God lays a claim on Jonah's life, and he tries to run away from God. So there he is on a boat bound to Tarsus out in the middle of the Mediterranean when what should happen but a storm starts brewing. And the wind starts picking up, and the waves start kicking up, and the sailors start to get scared. And the storm that comes down, it's so fierce that the sailors believe their ship is going to be torn apart. So they start throwing their cargo overboard. It doesn't help. They each start praying to their own gods, hoping to appease whatever deity it is that had sent this supernatural storm. It doesn't help. 
Finally, they ask their strange new passenger, who isn't saying much, Have you done anything to bring this storm on us? And Jonah, who is apparently an honest guy, says, I am fleeing from the presence of God, who is the Lord of the dry land and the seas. This storm is because of me. And if you throw me overboard, you will all be fine. Like I said, he's an honest guy. They throw Jonah overboard. Now Jonah is there floating alone in the sea, probably reconsidering his life choices, when he is swallowed whole by a whale. And this isn't just any old whale. This is an express whale to Nineveh. And after three dark, slimy days and three dank, squishy nights, Jonah is spewed up onto the beach outside Nineveh. And in a great feat of understatement, the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Jonah, go to Nineveh and proclaim the word I tell you. Despite fleeing to Tarsus, despite a shipwreck, despite three days inside a whale, despite Jonah trying his best to run away from his purpose in life, here he is again. His feet are right at the starting line, right on the path of God's purpose for him. In the book of Jonah, we learn what happens when we don't follow our purpose in life. God comes and gets us. God comes and gets us if we have strayed from the paths of purpose. God runs the pathway right under our feet again. We can't escape God's purpose, even if we try. What's the chance we would just accidentally miss out? The things that used to make life make sense in this pandemic world, they're gone. Purpose can feel gone too. When a job disappears, purpose gone. Or when a job is so totally transformed as to be unrecognizable, purpose gone. When family can't gather and volunteer opportunities can't gather and travel can't happen and school can't happen, purpose gone. Life just turns into waiting around for life. So if you're sitting here today because your purpose in life feels gone, if you don't know what you're going to do with your life anymore, or you know exactly what you should be doing and you just can't, if you feel like you have gotten off track for the purpose of your life and you are wandering in some strange place and you worry you will never get back to where you're supposed to be going, if that sounds like you, I've got some good news for you. I've got some good news for you. There is no way to miss out on God's purpose for your life. It can't be done. You can't escape God's purpose for your life, even if you try. So what chance is there that you might have accidentally missed it? You can't escape God's purpose for your life, even if you flee to the farthest corners of the earth. So what chance is there that a few months of staying in your own house would somehow frustrate God's plans for you? God knows where to find you. Your house. There is no way to miss out on God's purpose for you because that isn't what God is like. In the book of Jonah, we learn what happens when you aren't following your purpose in life. God comes and gets you. If you have strayed from the paths of purpose or been swept away from it to some strange place, God runs the pathway of purpose right under your feet again so that you are standing at the starting line. You can't escape God's purpose even if you try. So what chance is there? that you might accidentally miss it or that circumstances would take it away. God will never stop bothering you, never stop pursuing you until you are living the life of purpose God has for you.
And even then, even when you are on the path, God will keep after you to make sure you are on track. No matter what has gone on in your life, no matter what this pandemic has taken away from you, where you are standing right now, it is the starting line for God's purpose for you. You are no farther away than one step from the path of purpose that God has given for you. Now, I don't know what to do about all this. And I cannot tell you what God's purpose for your life is. But what I have, I give to you. The story of Jonah. Jonah who proves that even if we try to escape from God's purpose for us, we cannot. God will always, always, always come and find you and place your feet on good paths right where God would lead you. Thanks be to God for that indescribable gift. Amen. Welcome to the heart of God. Breathe deep, beloved. I am bringing everyone in. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is your birthplace. There are no requirements unmet. This is your birthright. No one is refused. Come in. Let down. Expand. There is more than enough room. Join me in the deep, refreshing, endless, eternal. Wade in and be refreshed. Let your mind untangle. Let your body rest. Let your spirit be at ease. I am this moment, and by waves of love I will reset your cadence. By my current get you back on course. My touchable representations on earth, I will birth you again, my sons, my daughters, soaked in my love, and bless you, beloved, to stand and emerge, still dripping of the heart of God, as one fluid, hope-restored movement to alter the environment for the better everywhere you go. Because everywhere you will go, there I am. In these difficult and uncertain times, we are extraordinarily grateful for your continued support and financial gifts that enable our church to continue our programs and ministries. Such generosity is inspirational and hope-giving in the midst of so much hardship, tragedy, and division. If you are able and would like to contribute to the ministries of First United Church, there are several ways you may do so. You can give by text 
All you have to do is text the word First United, one word, to 73256 and include the amount you would like to give. You can also give online on our website at firstunitedoakpark.com slash give, where you can either contribute a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift. And if you prefer, you can mail in a check in the coming days. We give thanks for all the ways that you contribute to our community and the power of the Holy Spirit that has the ability to gather us together across time and space. May God bless your heart and hands. Amen. I invite you to join me in a posture of prayer. Gracious God, 
in these times of division and uncertainty, we find ourselves struggling, struggling with meaning and purpose. At times we feel we lack direction. We lose our way. We are at a loss for what steps to take. But you are ever close and able to see paths and potential that we overlook. For you know the plans you have for us, that to which we are called, our vocation, and it is inescapable. You lovingly and purposefully knit us together in the womb out of nothing. Body and soul, we are marvelously made. It is a comfort to know that even when we are unsure of our purpose, you are at work in our lives. In this sacred space, we are united through the spirit and in sharing the prayers we bring before you, we are brought closer to you through the love and care of one another. Loving God, you see each of us as we truly are. You love us. You take the whole of our experiences, our entire being, and are able to envision all that we are capable of. Give us the courage to lean into and walk by faith when we struggle with meaning and purpose. Courage to continue to move forward with hope, even in the midst of uncertainty, with confidence in the plans you have for us. We pray to you, our Creator, Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. me.
before we end this time of worship together, we just want to remind you of a few announcements of things happening in our church life each week. On Mondays, you have the opportunity to join with the knitters and crocheters at 10 a.m. for prayer shawl ministry in Zoom. If you are a beginner, an expert, or would like to learn more about knitting or crocheting, we encourage you to join us. It is a time of fellowship, self-care, and an opportunity to provide care for our community. On Mondays as well at 12.30, you can join Bill Chin for a hymn sing. And on Thursdays at 2 p.m., you can join one of the pastoral staff during a time of office hours to check in with you and see how you are doing. All of the links to each of these Zooms can be found on the homepage of our church website. Now, please join your voices with those gathered near and far as we sing our closing hymn. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you? blind and see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoner free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you Summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll grow, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you. Children of God, go from this time knowing that you are loved deeply by your Creator. Go from this time following the example of Christ your Redeemer. And go from this time with the assurance that the Spirit has a call on your life that is good and true. Amen.